Um, without further ado, uh, I'll just quickly say uh, exactly what we'll be doing today. Uh, so I would like to start by showing us a little uh, video that uh, here in the foundation we did about different uh, styles of uh, making the Easter decorations. And then I will literally do five minutes kind of presentation, easy tips for someone who is not artist. I'm not artist, just uh, that's too, <laughs> uh, important to mention. Uh, my, I don't have any artistic credential. I'm doing crafts uh, sometimes and I put the toddler for last six months at home and <laughs> I have to become uh, quite crafty with him, obviously. Uh, and uh, so that's my artistic credential, but I will give you some uh, few simple tips how to make uh, Easter eggs uh, from whatever uh, decoration, from whatever you have at home. And then uh, we will have Alicia who will tell us a little bit more about the Polish Easter traditions and different, uh, more difficult techniques of decoration. And as we mentioned uh, before, uh, we would like you to all to maybe participate with us uh, do egg decoration and maybe we can show some of them at the end if you're willing to uh, as this was tradition um, in Poland that the women it was predominantly women were uh, getting together for uh, egg decorating gossiping it was kind of like a social event so I hope uh, we can do that as well so uh, we can start decorating our eggs uh, and carry on uh, while Alicia is giving her presentation and then at the end we can share our um, creations. So as I say, we will start with a little uh, movie that shows you, uh, just to give you an idea, different uh, techniques from different regions and they probably kind of the simplest techniques. So maybe you can try to somehow uh, copy them or while you listen to the presentation. And then I will do a little uh, show uh, how to do that. Okay, so. Don't need much at home to do uh, a simple uh, pisanki, as we call that. Uh, 
in Polish. Um, so I've got just a few examples for you. As I say, I try to make uh, kind of uh, out of materials that I have at home to make it easy for everyone. So I'll just get my little crafty things uh, for me. Um, so. So what I find it, uh, sorry, like I've normally I've got the, the top view, so I will be, uh, but it doesn't work today. So I will be just showing to, to the camera. I hope you can see all of this properly. Uh, so what I would like to say that like my favorite and the easiest way of decorating it, uh, this is uh, uh, with paints, uh, which you can use normal paints that you have probably at home uh, if you've got children to craft like poster paints. Uh, but before we talk to the techniques, we should probably talk about the medium we're using, uh, which is obviously eggs. Um, so if you want to do very intricate eggs, I would probably recommend the black egg because it's white and then everything looks very uh, vibrant on it. And then you obviously can go for the brown eggs, the chicken eggs. And then, uh, as we say, the easiest way also to do that is to pre-boil the egg, so hard boil the egg, uh, and then you can handle it very nicely. Uh, but if you're not a fan of hard boiled eggs or you don't want to have a, I don't know, depending how many uh, uh, eggs you're decorating, uh, suddenly 10 eggs to eat after that, uh, you can do that way. And you can do a little hole. I'm not sure you're going to see with this camera. It's if you want to do a little hole at the one end of the egg with a pin or just the tip of the sharp knife and on another, and you can blow the egg out. And what you have here, that's what I did with this one, uh, it's just empty shell and you can decorate it and that can stay on your shelf uh, for a while or you can use it next year or it's obviously just much more difficult to handle after. And then just uh, when it comes to the coloring um, eggs, uh, you can obviously use the old shop um, stuff that you've got around the shops at the moment for Easter. And then you can also use the natural uh, things that you've got in your cupboards, like coffee, onion peels, um, red cabbage uh, to color them. We're gonna have actually a little uh, video again about this uh, later on when Alicia will be talking uh, about uh, Easter in more details. I just want to show you quickly what I did is to show you the difference between uh, the egg, uh, the duck egg and the chicken egg in the coloring. So this is the same dye, uh, but as you see the duck egg, because it's white, it became like nicely bright uh, green color. And this one is the, well, it's not the most appealing color at the moment. Uh, I just want to chose green because uh, to show you uh, the difference. And then when it comes to decorating, as I say, um, it can be very simple. So as you see this pattern, I did just simply by putting uh, like a rubber bands around this before I put into the, like that, before I put uh, screw rubber bands, before I put that into the uh, dye, into the coloring, and you know, you can put all of them and have these nice stripy things. The easy way for coloring the um, uh, chicken egg, which I find it uh, very beautiful, is just to use one uh, white uh, paint, and you can you can see how this is literally just a white pen paint, like a poster paint. And I did some uh, dots with the tip of the um, of the brush, so you can see how beautiful it looks uh, on the dark uh, egg, uh, chicken um, egg uh, shell. Um, and then also, like, as I'm saying, all my techniques are kind of like cheating techniques. Uh, probably the uh, traditional artist would be a Paul. I did a few other examples. So what I'm saying, uh, what I will say that your biggest friend is uh, a tape, double tape, double uh, sided sticky tape, because then you can just stick whatever you want. Uh, or like a colorful washing, wash that they called washi tape. So they basically like a colorful stick 
sticky tape and you can just uh, stick them on the egg. That's literally what I did. I just painted the egg with the Sharpies, the different color Sharpies, and then I put the uh, washi tapes around this. And that's what it created it. And then, as I say, you can use the, like, you can use obviously super glue. Uh, I'm always ending up uh, <laughs> sticking my fingers together. That's the reason why I'm using the uh, double sided sticky tape. But you can literally then, especially on the chicken egg, it looks very beautiful. I just cut out like a little flower shape uh, from the fleece and I had some ribbons around. So I just put the a um, bit of sticky tape around and I stick the ribbon to that and it looks very uh, nice without much effort. I literally did that in five minutes. Um, there's a lot of techniques, uh, more uh, complicated techniques. You can definitely have, uh, go uh, much more uh, sophisticated with that. But I think it's the most important is to have fun. So I will uh, so I encourage everyone, whatever uh, materials you have with you today, just have fun. Oh, and I forgot to just mention that like the simples and like also very effective technique is to just use the Sharpies, um, especially on the duck eggs, which are taking colors very nice. You can literally paint on them. So, you know, if you've got uh, good drawing skills, you just can take Sharpies and draw something. And that's what I might do while um alicia is doing uh, her presentation so we invite now alicia to us and she will tell us a little bit more about the easter traditions of poland one second i just need to bring her up with us to the room mm. Hello, Alicia. How are you? Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm fine. Thank you. It's a nice uh, day in Buc. Uh, finally, it's some kind of uh, sunny. Uh, earlier, we have a snow even, so <laughs> lucky uh, there is a sun now. Um, so as Aga said, uh, now I'm giving you a short presentation about uh, uh, traditional uh, Polish Easter customs. Uh, so, let me just maybe quickly tell uh, everyone how uh, amazing you are. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I just wanted to mention that Alicia is lecturer in the University of Łódź. Yeah, uh, I'm, 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 yeah. Giving, I'm the associate professor in the Institute of, of Ethnology and Cultural Anthropology of the uh, University yes. of Łódź and I'm uh, starting uh, working with uh, Bardzo Ładnie Foundation on a project uh, about Polish and Irish um, similarities between uh, customs. So uh, yes. hopefully okay. it will be okay. great. <laughs> So I leave you in a very capable hands of Alicia. Alicia will uh, give us a little uh, presentation. I will be trying to decorate it, my next egg and I encourage everyone to uh, join as well. And then maybe if you've got any questions to Alicia, you can put them um, in the chat and I will try to ask them uh, maybe after her presentation. Yeah. Uh, so enjoy and Alicia will leave you. Yeah, I'm just starting the presentation. I hope that everybody sees it. Yeah, it's uh, it's working. So um, we met just before <laughs> uh, the most important Christian feast, uh, which is Easter. Uh, most of the preparation, uh, both culinary as well as cleaning, and for someone um, also spiritual one, uh, are behind us. Um, now we are waiting to celebrate the resurrection. How do we celebrate? With what do we associate our individual cultural activities and practices? Today we are going to look at the Easter celebration, as I said, um, starting with the Palm Sunday, characteristic for the Polish culture. 
of course, the celebration of this holiday differs uh, regionally uh, in Poland. Uh, in this short presentation, we are going to focus at the main parts of this feast. Uh, in the ritual year, we are also going to talk about interesting customs. Uh, we are going to see what role they play and what symbolism they refer to. This is, of course, my subjective choice, uh, but I hope it is going to be an interesting journey through Polish Easter and maybe you are also going to find some common paths uh, for Irish and Polish ways of celebration. I believe so. Uh, however, before we move on, this, this, uh, on to discuss the individual, individual parts that compose the cycle, um, uh, of Easter celebrations, uh, we should point out the multi-perspective genesis uh, of this festive time. Uh, this will allow us uh, to understand and indicate the multidimensionality of certain symbolic content uh, related not only and exclusively to the Christian faith. Uh, Easter is a perfect example where we can find the influence of various kinds of worldview, beliefs and action. As a result, uh, we can find in Easter numerous cultural practices that combine various levels of interpretation of the world around us, including the sub supernatural world, the material world, the world of the nature and the world of the human existence. Easter falls on a special time of the year, the springtime. As it is well known, Easter itself is a movable feast. Until the end of the third century, it was the only annual holiday in Christianity. Uh, at the first council of Nietzsche in 325, it was agreed that it will be celebrated celebrated on the first Sunday after the first full moon in spring. This complicated principle actually corresponds into the solar Julian calendar of the specific date of Nisan 14th uh, from the Hebrew religious calendar, which is a solar lunar calendar. Due to the fact that is the move that is a movable holiday, also the time of preparation uh, is annually determined according uh, to the present presented rule. Uh, the Easter time is preceded by the time of fasting, which is also the period of early spring and the end of the winter. It is a part of introducing the celebration time full of joy and renewal, increasing uh, its intensification as we approach Easter Sunday. Lent, Palm Sunday, the celebration of Holy Week. These increasing uh, practices allow people to prepare properly um, for this special time. The break in everyday life uh, restoring order, which is characteristic of the very structure of the holiday, fest as such. As I have already mentioned, Easter overlaps with an equally intense and transformational time uh, of the year, namely the one related to the cyclical characteristic of the nature. Hence, in holiday activities, we just find such references, references uh, to the vegetative cycle of plants, uh, the cycle of um, animal birth, etc. And it also refers to consciousness layer of the end of the exhaustion of the time and energy, and therefore the necessity to renew them. In the case of the Christian mediator, both divine and human, Easter connected with the reviving nature sends us to the necessity of recreation of a new order out of chaos to put it on order. Uh, resurrection uh, is a kind of recreation of the world and its order. And for this, you need the uh, medi mediation and participation of all dimension, natural, real and divine, supernatural. Therefore, during the celebration, 
references to such symbols and elements are ascribed to which purifying meanings were attributed, primarily water and fire. The overlapping of custom and practices related to the beginning of spring and the restoration of nature is visible through the Easter period. In Slavic beliefs, this time referred to so-called Jaregody, falling mainly on the spring solstices. Even today, we can find elements of this system uh, in a relict form. Of course, a full reconstruction of beliefs and practices in the, it is impossible um, due uh, to the lack of clear, clearly interpretable uh, sources, but we can assume that they fit in uh, uh, with their nature in this rewinding life cyclicality and the need to overcome the chaos associated with the depletion of resources, both material and spiritual. Uh, let us say uh, once again uh, that the context of Easter is uh, the annual rituals. Practices and customs was not limited only to the religious dimension, but was also related to the specific beginning of the springtime, uh, which was the uh, beginning of growing, uh, beginning of the agriculture year. Uh, that is why we find practices related to expulsion, chasing away the evil, uh, diseases and winter at this time, uh, while ensuring uh, our own uh, fertility, health and prosperity. After this introduction, uh, which places the celebration related to Easter in a broader context, let's move uh, on to the individual elements that created the celebration, showing how they looked in the past and nowadays in Poland. So we are starting with uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, we, are, we are going to start with the traditions related to the celebration on Palm Sunday, also known in Poland as Flower Sunday or Willow Sunday. Uh, this custom of blessing palms, trees uh, in churches in memory of Christ's entry into Jerusalem uh, is confirmed uh, in sources as commonly practiced since the 16th uh, century. We are going to return to the power of these weeks or springs uh, in traditional Polish customs in a moment. Uh, most uh, palms, uh, Polish palms, are small bunches made of willow twigs with catkins, uh, sometimes with the addition of periwinkle, pine or artificial, artificial paper made by paper flowers. Uh, palms from Podkarpacie and Kurpie regions uh, stand out uh, on this uh, ground. So. Uh, in Kurpia, uh, palm trees uh, can reach four, five, even six uh, meter high. Uh, their base consists of sticks of hazel or pine trees and twinned and twinned uh, with forest pl plants, berries, uh, junipers, boxwood, yew, and decorated with paper flowers and tissue paper ribbons. They are made with this. Uh, they are made uh, with the participation of children. It is believed that children are, will grow like those tall palms. Podkarpacie is also characterized uh, by large size of palms and traditionally young men were obligated to bring them to the church, as you can see on the picture. Uh, an interesting version of the palm uh, widespread after World War II uh, are the so-called uh, Vilnius palms, uh, which appeared with the arrival uh, of uh, repatriants uh, from Vilnius and the surrounding area. They are about 40, 50 centimeter tall and are made of dried and tinted flowers. The regional uh, names of the palms uh, refer uh, primarily to young willow springs. So why is willow chosen as the basic raw material for the construction? Uh, it is important uh, 
its importance uh, is highlighted by the regular, regular uh, nomenclature as well as the name of the holiday, which, as I have already mentioned, uh, is also called Willow Sunday. Willow, as an element of nature, had great importance in pre-Christian beliefs and its symbolism uh, was used in the later period. So it was a magical cult and powerful tree. In the folk tradition, it is considered uh, as a life-loving plant. This is, of course, uh, related to the observation of its nature, fast de developing uh, leaves in spring uh, and easy rooting uh, of its twi twigs. Uh, so it was seen as a perfect example of uh, reborn life. Uh, it gains extra power, we can say that, uh, through sacrifice. So let us show how the vital energy was passed on the people and animals through various cultural practices. It was supposed to ensure fertility, wealth, health, stimulation of life powers, while protecting against the broadly understood evil. So what was done with the blessed palm twigs? Farm animals were struck, and, struck or beaten to ensure health and their welfare. On one hand, uh, these were protective uh, treatments. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they were effective. This dual duality of palm power will be repeat repeated in most treatments. Fragments uh, of uh, twigs uh, were buried in the fields to ensure fertility. They were blocked at the corners of fields, uh, in the walls of residential and farm buildings, uh, as a protective measure against various types uh, of disaster, especially against storms or lightning. Uh, they were put into also uh, they were put into potato bases uh, for planting or to uh, seed. Uh, they were also stuck behind uh, sacred images in a home as uh, ones which belong to sacred sacred order. Uh, they were also used as a remedy in folk medicine, for example, uh, to protect against a sore throat, uh, people swallow uh, catkins. Now, let's move on the, re the remaining days of celebration. Do not be afraid, we will not discuss each of the day of the Holy Week in detail. Uh, I will only pay attention to some aspects uh, that seems characteristic to me. Uh, on the one hand, for the still living Easter tradition in Poland, and on the other hand, for those elements that are syncretic in nature, associated not only exclusively with the Christian faith. Uh, it is worth paying attention to the existence of many prohibition and orders in the folk tradition uh, related to the soul-related dimension during the Holy Week. On the one hand, it is a time of reflecting on the passion, but also a conviction that at the time the souls of the dead resist, reside on earth. Uh, it is characteristic for holidays, which constitute a specific point of transition between one reality and another. Uh, the renewed act of creation resulting from the chaos uh, is connected with the stay of those who no longer belong to this world, deities, the deaf, etc. Therefore, at the time, people refrained from noise and acts like Threshing, breaking, spinning, chopping, waving, sewing, etc. That was characteristic, especially for Good Friday, which, like in Ireland, is day without the work activities. Uh, but what first comes to our mind when we think about Easter in Poland? 
first of all, X. Uh, now a few words uh, about them, their meaning and the symbolism, not only uh, the Easter one, uh, but also what customs and practices are associated with them during this uh, holiday season. The egg can be classified uh, as a uh, universal symbol of life, uh, widespread in many cultures, uh, in many traditions and beliefs throughout history. First of all, the egg functioned uh, in many cosmogenic myths uh, about the beginning of the world as a pattern, uh, the first fruit of life, uh, the beginning of life. Sometimes the world uh, or even gods were born from the egg. The egg can also be a symbol of the universe. After all, uh, it contains uh, all the elements that allow to create a new life. Uh, the egg is associated with the beginning, but also with the what with what transform into its final form, it foreshadows it. Therefore, uh, it has, because it contains the embryo of life, uh, an initial character. Also, uh, referring to practices related to fertility, uh, healing or protection. Uh, it is not surprising uh, then uh, that it appeared in cultural practices wherever something was or is started. It is also related uh, to the solar cult uh, through its, uh, its creative dimension, uh, but also the shape, which at the same time refers us uh, to abundance and fullness. On the example of a an egg, we can see what the symbols are characterized by. On the one hand, uh, concentrating many layers of meaning. Uh, on the other hand, dispersing these meanings into many planes and referring connection. Uh, decorating eggs uh, was known even before Christianity. For example, in China, Egypt, Egypt or Persia. Uh, as an element of Easter rituals, they were accepted by the church in the 20, 20, uh, 12th uh, century. Uh, the oldest uh, painted egg from Poland was found on the Opole island uh, of Ostrówek. Uh, during archaeological excavation and dates back to the 10th uh, century. Uh, they were also a gift for the death, for a new life. The egg is also associated with the so-called good start magic, and it often functions as a protective measure and gift. Let's move on to eggs in the Easter uh, rituals and uh, customs uh, in Poland. These are mainly painted eggs. Uh, they were most often decorated during the Holy Week, and this activity was dominated by women, as Aga said uh, at the beginning of our uh, webinar. And uh, in some regions of Poland, the disturbance of it, this process by the presence of men uh, had to be remedied, uh, among others, by using salt. Uh, before eggs uh, became an element of a gift for children, godchildren, relatives, for beloved ones, they had to be uh, properly uh, decorated. Let, let's take a look at these uh, ways of decoration. Natural dyes such as onion shells, oak bark, young uh, cereal uh, shoots, uh, beetroot, dried mistletoe and red cabbage were traditionally used to color the eggs. So now I will show you the short clip about um, the uh, dyeing the eggs. Hopefully, let's start.
So let's back to the presentation. Um, the colors uh, could also carry their symbolism. Uh, and so red was supposed to refer to the um, blood of the Christ. Uh, purple heralded uh, the end of the morning, uh, green heralded the joy of the uh, resurrection. How was it decorated? Um, and decorated? Uh, they, some, there is some few uh, techniques uh, used uh, to decorate it, uh, the egg, as Aga also mentioned uh, before, and you can see it in the first uh, movie. Uh, it, for example, it was the batik technique, uh, which was the creating the pattern with uh, the wax. Uh, also etching, wrapping and scrapping. What patterns dominated? Mainly uh, geometric and floral, but also animal motifs uh, from the time to time. Now we will see uh, two short clips uh, showing the difference uh, differences between uh, pisanki and krasanki. So we will start with uh, pisanki and then we will go to the krasanki.
And now the second movie uh, about uh, Krasanki. So let's uh, come back to the presentation uh, for a few, few minutes. Uh, okay. uh, apart from the fact that decorated eggs uh, in this way were uh, in the Easter basket, as I mentioned earlier, uh, they were also an Easter gift. Um, in some areas, uh, they were put under uh, the steps uh, of the stable uh, or buried in the field. Uh, so they were gifts, uh, some kind of sacrifices, but also um, parts uh, of the games of a fortune-telling fortune telling character, uh, predicting uh, prosperity and success in love. Uh, in Poland, uh, there is no egg uh, eggs hunting. Uh, the games were mostly focused uh, on breaking uh, the eggs shelves of uh, our uh, opponent. On the Holy Saturday, uh, food uh, is blessed and then must be consumed to the last cramp. And the consumption itself uh, began on Sunday morning. The products themselves, which were ordained, uh, alluded uh, in their symbolism uh, to the passion of Christ, uh, to the resurrection, uh, or were associated uh, with beliefs uh, how uh, to ensure uh, prosperity in the basket, uh, as you can see it on the uh, on the slide. Uh, you can find bread uh, symbolizing Jesus, eggs uh, with symbolic uh, properties I have just already mentioned, uh, meat products, they are supposed to be a harbinger of abundance and uh, at the same time refer to the paschal lamb uh, and sacrifice, uh, salt, 
um, as a strong protective uh, material uh, and uh, a lamp made of butter or uh, cake. Uh, sometimes you can also find, for example, horseradish as one of, uh, an, uh, on the one hand, uh, a strong symbol of fertility um, and on the other hand, uh, referring to the bitterness of the Lord's passion. What is more, both in Poland and Ireland, uh, it is time to bless water, creating holy water. In some areas in Poland, it is still popular to bless also the fire, uh, especially in the Saturday uh, evening. Easter Sunday itself is a family time, the time of the culmination of celebration, both in the religious and non-religious dimension. Uh, but let us move to the last day of the celebration, uh, the Easter Monday, as the day that ends this period, closing the feast cycle. Mm, on this day, also the period associated with the magic um, uh, of water begins, uh, which lasts until Pentecost of St. John. Uh, water becomes an element of practices and customs, cleansing and creating. It was an, and still is common in the Polish tradition to drench each other more or less uh, abundantly with water, in particularly uh, drenching uh, affected young women uh, and of course uh, young men were initiating these activities. Uh, the second of the custom related to this day was lashing with twigs and again we come back uh, to the conviction about the vitality uh, of young uh, springs. Uh, heating uh, them was supposed to re redirect, redirect uh, the force of living trees uh, reborn after winter into people being hit. Easter Monday is also a time to meet with other relatives, uh, visit each other's homes, homes hand gifts, uh, for example, pisanki, uh, and eat meals together. I was able uh, to tell you only about some of the traditions related to Easter in Poland, those that were primarily linked to the beginning of the spring, uh, with the promise of eternal life. Mm, Easter time is the time when we can find above all the multiplied and multi-layered uh, motif of the new life and rebirth. Uh, the resurrection and the beginning of uh, spring, I wish you this vital force uh, connected with a new beginning uh, for this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alicia. That was uh, great, very insightful. Uh, um, I was listening to you very carefully, but also I was doing some decorations. Uh, I don't know, it's uh, uh, anyone wants to share? If you raise your hand, if you're brave, I can uh, put your camera on. I did just to show you a little happy Easter funny one as well, and not the best. Um, if anyone has any questions to Alicia, maybe um, I would be very, maybe uh, in, it was very interesting to uh, hear, obviously, how uh, connected with the uh, Hogan uh, celebration is is the Easter like I guess like yeah, yeah but uh, you know it's really hard to um, recreate uh, the pagan beliefs because we don't have uh, yeah. so much sources so we just you know uh, based on some kind of relic uh, customs. The one thing that was I don't know would you be able to answer that because obviously uh, that that's again as you say it's difficult to recreate that. You say that the egg decorating was accepted as a Christian tradition quite late, I would say, isn't it? Twelve. Uh, yeah. uh, so I was just wondering, was that like not practiced secretly before, or just not uh, uh, not acknowledged by 
church? Would you be able to um, I guess it, it was practiced uh, and because of the popularity of that kind of practice, church just, you know, bring it to the celebration of, of Easter and official uh, celebration. And this happens with lots of uh, beliefs and lots of customs, uh, um, that kind of syncretism of, of uh, religion uh, is, is occurred and was occurring uh, during the beginning and forming uh, Christianity. Perfect. That, uh, that's uh, very interesting. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I just wanted to answer to the chat. Thank you for the invitation from the National Museum as well. Yeah, um, it was a really great pleasure to, to have this uh, time of opportunity. We, we can make a few more in the future together. And obviously there is a program between the University of Puj uh, that will already starting or will start? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we already have started it, so. Yeah, so uh, it's already happening. And um, I don't know, is uh, the, are, Anyone wants to show their eggs? No, no, no takers. That is that in that um, for that. Then we finish, and I would like to uh, wish you all happy Easter, and hopefully it will uh, stay uh, with uh, this beautiful weather for a few more days. And uh, thank you very much, Alicia, again for joining us on. The, yeah, it, it was my holidays. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. It was it was my pleasure. And uh, actually, in which uh, the snow starting <laughs> again. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah. well maybe we can push some sun from Ireland to you then. Thank you very much, Alicia. Yeah. Bye, thank everyone. You very much. Bye, everyone. Happy Easter.